So um, I wanted to remind you about the um, approach that I try to take to doing these problems. Um, and I tend to do it in five steps. And for me, it always starts with drawing a picture and just labeling, 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 making up names for things and drawing arrows. That's the foundation of my approach to doing related rates problems. And once I've drawn a picture, then I've got a stronger handle on what I'm doing. And then I can seek to relate the variables in my problem, which involves writing down an equation. I'm gonna try to get that equation in probably two variables. Sometimes it'll start in three, and then I need to eliminate a variable. Like, oh, say eliminate the radius or eliminate the height because there's a way to have a relationship between them that lets me substitute one out. Once I have my relationship, then I'm going to differentiate with respect to time. I'm going to pay really close attention to which things are constant and which things are not constant. And I'm going to defer substitution of known quantities that are not truly constant until step four. So it's not until after I've differentiated that I'm going to substitute in known values that happen to be true just at a moment in time. We're going to put those in last. And once I've done all that substitution, then I can solve for my target unknown which very often is a rate of change, but sometimes is a, as a state variable and you'll be given all the rates of change. Let's practice my five steps for solving related rates problems to this distance problem. I'm gonna do this distance problem and we're gonna do another distance one that's gonna be really similar and then we'll do an angle problem. This distance problem is gonna start by drawing a picture. So we've got a boat starting 186 miles directly east of some city. So here's my city, Smithville, and we're gonna treat Smithville as a point. And we're gonna say we're 186 miles directly east. And that's where the boat starts, right? So that's where like t equals zero, but we really don't care what the time value is. But think of it as like where t equals zero. This 186, that's constant, that ain't changing. The boat started 186 miles east and you can't change where you started. You just started where you start. So that 186 is truly a constant value. Now we, we get a boat and the boat is traveling due south, right? South, boat's traveling due south. Here's my boat, here's my boat. And it's traveling due south and this distance here, let's call that X because I need to call it something. Let's call it X and let's remind ourselves that that's changing by putting an of T right there if we want. And I know that that's 121 based on this, but that's not always 121. It's just 121 for a moment. So I know that X of T star equals 121 for some T star. I don't care what the value of T star is. I just know that at some point in time, the boat's 121 miles south. We haven't really parsed out the rates of change, but I'm looking for directives like um, describe or like how or question marks. How fast is the distance between the boat and Smithville changing? That's asking me to compute a rate of change. So I'm being asked to compute D something DT. That's my, gonna be my target unknown. I've got to draw that distance in and we haven't drawn that in yet and so I'm going to let that be the diagonal the distance between the boat and the city and we called that D so D D D T is my target unknown. I also see from the statement of my problem that it travels due south at a speed of 27 miles per hour that says that D X D T is equal to 27. So there's a, a motion arrow here, dx dt is 27. And there's another motion arrow that this distance here is growing, it's growing. And the rate at which it's growing is dd dt. So that was step one, draw a picture. Step two is relate. What am I gonna relate? I'm gonna relate x and d. Why am I going to relate X and D? Because those are the labeled quantities that I have here. And those are the rates of change that appear in my original problem. Maybe the names are different. The names don't matter. But these choices up here, these labels affect 
um, what I call things later on, but they ultimately inform what I'm relating. And what I've got is a right triangle. And so we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. That says that d squared is equal to 186 squared plus x squared. That's my relationship. Let's consult our steps. Step one, draw. Step two, relate. Okay. Step three, ooh, differentiate. So it looks like we're going to be doing next is differentiating with respect to time. Three, differentiate with respect to time. That is to say, I'm going to take d dt of d squared and d dt of 186 squared plus x squared. Note that x is just x at this point. Even though I know that eventually x of t star is going to be 121, I haven't substituted it yet. If you had substituted it at this point, then you would just get zero right here, which means that the derivative on the left-hand side would also have to be zero. That's why we're going to defer substitution until after we've differentiated. So let's do that implicit differentiation with respect to time. On the left-hand side, I'll have 2d times dd dt. And on the right-hand side, 2x times dx dt. Let's cancel my twos. And now I have my relationship in terms of the derivatives. It always comes from something that looks static, but then these are hidden functions of time, right? D and X are both functions of time. So this looks static, but it gives rise to the dynamic equation about how the related rates have changed. Step four, substitute. And I'm gonna substitute into d times dd dt equals x times dx dt. That means I've got to come up with values for these four symbols. d equals dd dt equals x equals and dx dt equals. We're going to come up with values for each of those things. I'm going to refer back to my, my original statement of my problem. I noted that we're being asked how fast is the distance between the boat and Smithville changing. That means that dd dt, that's my unknown. I'll put a question mark there to indicate that. Ooh, I happen to know that. That's the Pythagorean theorem tells me that. This is the square root of 186 squared plus 121 squared. X is 121 and dx dt is 27. I'm getting those values from the original statement of my problem. Right after traveling 121 miles, that's x of t star is 121 for some t star. And then from that, I will compute the value of that distance along the diagonal with that square root. So I've got my substitutions ready. Let's go ahead and make those substitutions. So then I have that the square root of 186 squared plus 121 squared times dd dt equals 121 times 27. So that was substitute. Step five, solve. So we're going to take root 186 plus 121 each squared. times dd dt equals 1 to 1 times 27. And I'm going to take and divide by that quantity to the other side so that I get dd dt equals 121 times 27 over the square root of 186 squared plus 121 squared. And then we'll evaluate that into floating point numbers or leave it as an exact number depending on what our purpose is. I'm done. That's a great question. If we were to draw the picture wrong, could you still get the problem right? Um, the answer is yes. 
um, there is a way to draw the picture incorrect and still get the problem right. And basically, like what, you know, if you take your original picture here, and if we just rotate that, you know, by like 90 degrees, so that the boat started due north and was traveling east, or the boat started due west and was traveling north, or I, I can't mirror it. Right, so, so there are a bunch of different ways to draw it that still lead to the same value. Um, so I think if you do a number of these problems with this particular, like there's something traveling some distance away and it's all right angles, you'll see that it just boils down to this picture or some rotation or reflection of this picture. So there's, so let's, let's visit this problem again. Let's do a little recap because I, I saw a few people who felt like they could be feeling more sure-footed about this. I'm gonna invest in you right now. So um, when we relate X and D, I know that I'm gonna relate those two quantities because they came from my drawing and I was given information about how fast X was changing, this distance the boat has traveled. And I'm asked a question about the distance between the boat and the city. So those two things together lead me to know that my variables are x and d and then i'm going to relate my variables and now the creative part about this was often the hard part is like where do i come up with that relationship from and so in this case it comes from exploiting the geometry of my so we use the pythagorean theorem to write down that the, the square on the hypotenuse is the sum of the squares on the legs now i'm not substituting the value for x yet I know the value of x is eventually going to be 121, but this is true at all times. And if I put in 121, it wouldn't be true at all times anymore. It would only be true at that one specific time. So we're going to keep this one true at all times so that when I differentiate, I don't accidentally get zeros. So after I've got my relationship, I'm going to differentiate with respect to time. And I'll just take the time derivative of both sides. Because if two things are equal, then the rates of change always have to be equal also. Applying the chain rule on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, I end up with 2D, D, 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 T, because I've got a two and that two comes downstairs and gives me two out front. And then I've got a two minus one hidden upstairs as the coefficient. And because there's a variable mismatch here, because D is a function of T, and I could put that in here. I've got of t. d does depend on t. We just don't know what its form is. Then this ends up popping out as a multiplicative factor because of the chain rule. The same thing happens on the right-hand side as far as x. And I just didn't write down the plus 0 because the derivative of a constant, additive constant, is 0. I take my 2s and I cancel them. And I get my relationship d d d d t equals x d x t t. Once I have that dynamic relationship, and it's dynamic because it involves derivatives, once I have that dynamic relationship, now I need to substitute values into it. So I replicate that equation over here, and then I'm just going to find the values for the symbols that go into that dynamic equation. This one here comes from the Pythagorean theorem at the particular moment of time that we're interested in. So at some t star, x is 121, and at that moment, d is the square root of 186 squared plus 121 squared by using the Pythagorean theorem. d, 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 t is my goal, and I know x and d, x, d, t because I was given them. And then I take all of those values and plug them in, and I get this expression down here. And at that point, I have one unknown. You know, it's, it looks like it's a lot of symbols, but that's just one symbol. And then I just solve for it and do algebra. And in this case, the algebra is relatively simple, and it often is. Um, so I just divide by the coefficient of my unknown to the other side, and I get my final value for what that rate of change is. I do note that it's a positive value, um, and um, it must be positive because this leg here is growing, which means that the diagonal also has to grow. 
right? So think about if the boat later on is down there, the length of the, that diagonal is growing, 